Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and WWDC 2023 or the Worldwide Developers Conference is a little over a month away. I thought we'd go over all the things we're currently expecting to be released at the event. There's more than normal and so whether or not all of them are true is hard to say, but this is based on what we believe will happen so far. Now the keynote will take place on June 5th at 1 p.m. Eastern time typically. I already went over that in other videos and you'll be able to watch it on Apple.com, Apple TV, YouTube, and possibly even even more locations. We're expecting a lot of hardware announcements this time around, which is something we don't typically see at WWDC. Now, whether or not they launch right away is hard to say, but the first thing is an AR or VR headset. It's rumored to be priced at $3,000 and be in low volume for the first version and run what's called Reality OS, or maybe XROS. We're not really sure. We've seen that in the code of iOS and other places, and it's something that we'll probably see. See, it will be set up for developers to actually get ready to program for and probably release later in the year. That's something that we'll have to see what Apple has planned for that. And I would expect a whole new OS interface that will coincide with what we get with the next versions of iOS and more. So we'll have that headset. It'll be a VR headset, possibly have augmented reality, and we'll have to see what Apple actually has that will make it worth it $3,000. Many people are calling it Apple Reality Pro. So we'll have to wait and see if that's what we have, but it could be something completely different that leads down a roadmap that Apple has planned to replace what the iPhone has become over years. I'm not sure that I really think that will happen, but it could. Also, we're waiting for the Mac Pro. The Mac Pro did not meet the two-year deadline that Apple had originally set for the full transition of its Macs to Apple Silicon. That's something we haven't seen up until now, and it's rumored to basically be the same thing that we currently have as far as the overall design. So it will have Apple Silicon and what Apple can offer to make it a Mac Pro that's more substantial and customizable than maybe a Mac Studio is hard to say, but we can expect them to at least show it and then announce maybe some sort of time frame for it. Also, we're expecting a 15-inch MacBook Air to go along with this 13-inch MacBook Air. It would have the same sort of chipsets with the M2 inside and basically just be a larger size version. The displays are already being made and sometimes Apple will just announce things that are a little bit less significant a little bit before the actual event so that they don't have to cover them during the event. If they do cover all of the hardware along with the software we're expecting, this could be a very long two hour event with much more in it than we ever expected. So I would think maybe some of it would release a little bit before maybe this device, the MacBook Air or something else. But either way, we'll have to wait and see what Apple does. But as far as hardware, that's what's expected. When it comes to software, of course, we're expecting iOS 17. I've talked about this in depth on different on different videos, and we're expecting the major thing to be performance efficiency, stability, and long-term sort of support for the current devices. Going back to the iPhone 10, 10R, the 10s max and all of those devices as well. So we can expect support long-term for those devices and have not just stability, but also a few new features. Of course, all of those augmented reality components that would go along with the reality pro headset, but also control center, maybe updated Siri, some more customization with control center, possibly interactive widgets and more. We're expecting all of those things along with focus modes, notification changes, accessibility updates, and, maybe a few changes to the camera. That's something I really want to see. We've heard some rumors, but it could be iPhone 15 specific. And then of course we'll have the dynamic Island changes that I think many of us have really been waiting to see. Dynamic Island is nice, but it hasn't really done a whole lot. So we're waiting to see Apple add more functionality to that. Now, like I said, we should get more augmented reality built into iOS 17, which would be a huge amount of frameworks for implementing functions into the phone. It would allow developers and, and allow for implementing augmented reality directly into their app. So that would go along with that VR headset. And the latest thing we're hearing is that we'll also have side loading. So based off of information, since the EU is actually regulating this, we would have side loading in the iPhones. So that would mean with iOS 17, possibly only in the European Union, we'd be able to have third party app stores and the ability to put apps outside of the app store, just like we can on a Mac. It would be up to you, but fully customizable in that sense, as Apple would have to allow it by law. Now we're expecting a big redesign of watchOS 10. This is something we've only heard more recently from Mark Gurman, and it would be a full redesign of the OS. 
what that means specifically, whether that's folders or whether that's maybe widgets on the screen or something completely different is hard to say. Apple never really has done a whole lot with watch OS. It seems, but it works well. It's very functional works pretty quickly. If we go into maybe camera, camera remote, it should open it on my iPhone. Like it did quickly. Things just seem to work. And it's been one of the more stable OSs we've had. So a full redesign is welcome, but also I hope it's stable and really reliable over time. Now, some of the things to be a little less excited about are Mac OS 14. We don't know the name of it yet, but Mac OS 14 isn't expected to get a huge update, but could incorporate all of the different changes we get with iOS 17. So that wouldn't be a huge change, but it would be a nice little update to have all of those features, maybe a control center that's more customizable, different widgets and more. But Mac OS 14 really isn't expected to have much, but should have some sort of companion to go along with Reality Pro. As far as the headset, I would expect that to be fully implemented across all devices. iPad OS 17 is really not a whole lot to talk about as we haven't heard a whole lot of leaks other than what we have with iOS 17, we can expect the same thing. So I haven't really mentioned it a whole lot. The same is true with tvOS 17 and also HomePod OS 17. So all of those things are expected very soon, but really we don't know what's going to be in them. If anything, that's major at all. Apple always seems to surprise us every year, but I would expect a few different changes here and there, but nothing huge. But as far as overall large changes, I would expect most of that to be focused on that new headset not iOS or anything else, which is a bit disappointing. However, we could have a huge surprise this year and maybe Apple will completely surprise us. And most of these leaks will be wrong, but typically they're right over year over year. And as we get closer to WWDC, we'll have more and more information about that. So I'm looking forward to WWDC. Of course, once we know more, I'll tell you in different news updates that I have weekly. And if there's anything else you're hearing or you'd love to see Apple do this year, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>